Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for being here for this meeting of the Town Board of the Town of Carmel. Thank you at home for watching. Before we get started, as always, we're going to have the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. So would everybody please rise? And Councilman Schneider, would you lead us? Okay, once again, good evening, everyone. I apologize, so we're coming out here 15 minutes late. Councilman Borelli had kept us back there a little bit longer than, than we wanted to be back there. <laughs> not only teasing, it was it was us, not Councilman Borelli, but I oh, wanted to blame him. So yeah, we were back there in executive session with Rob Giadotti. He's at Labor Council for Jackson Lewis Law Firm. Uh, discussing a, a uh, personal personnel matter, labor related. So, um, all town board members are present with the exception of Councilman Lupinacci. He couldn't be with us tonight as um, he's down visiting his dad down in the Westchester Medical Center who had a procedure done earlier in the week. He's doing great. Um, so, John uh, wanted to be with that, him down there tonight, so he couldn't make the meeting. Speedy well. recovered, Mr. Lupinacci. Yes, yes, Mr. Lupinacci, can't there. wait to, uh, you're back watching our meetings again. Yeah. Always a good guy to have out there. And uh, so all the way down to my right is Ann Spofford, as you know, as our town clerk. And all the way down to my left is Greg Polchetti, Carmel Town Council. So tonight's meeting is a uh, town board voting meeting. And the first item on the agenda is to accept the town board minutes of February 6th. I need a motion to accept those. So moved. Seconded. So moved Second. by Councilwoman McDonough, seconded by the rest of the board. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, <coughs> resolution number one is a resolution acknowledging appointment of the town historian who is uh, with us here tonight as well, uh, James Meyer. Uh, and I'm very, very proud and honored, and the board is also, to be appointing Jim Meyer as the new town historian. So without further ado, Councilman Schneider, would you read resolution number one? Be my pleasure. Uh, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Carmel hereby acknowledges the appointment by Supervisor Kenneth Schmidt of James T. Meyer of Mahopac, New York as town historian for the town of Carmel, effective immediately. I would offer this resolution as read. Second. I'll second that also. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Schneider? Yes, with Council pleasure. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes, with pleasure. And Supervisor Schmidt? Yes, also with pleasure. Um, congratulations, Jim. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, interview three candidates that actually submitted resumes and letters of interest, and they were all good candidates, but one that really stood out in my mind as, as being the person that I feel is going to do the, the, the best job and uh, who really cares deeply about the community and the history of the community is Jim Meyer. So, Jim, uh, thank you so much for submitting your letter of interest, and I know you're going to do a great job, and I believe you started already. Jim's probably hit the ground running uh, on, on some issues that he's going to be working on history related. So, uh, Jim, congratulations. Uh, best of luck in your new position. We're required under New York State law to have a town historian, as you know. So, uh, I know you're going to do a great job and uh, you're going to uh, spread the word of the, the history of the community throughout the community to all our residents. And uh, we look forward to working with you. So, Councilman, thank you. I want to thank the board. Uh, come, come on up. Come on up. I'd like yep. to thank the board for having the confidence in me. And, uh, I've already reached out to a lot of people who've, uh, I've been around a long time, I've known a lot of people who've been around a long time, and everybody seems willing to, uh, you know, help out and, uh, you know, promote the history of the town. So, looking forward to serving. Great. Great. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim, for coming home and shake your hand and congratulate you.
page. Mike, I would have put you on the good side. <laughs> Where were you? <laughs> would you get two pictures? Uh -huh. <laughs> two pictures with two pictures. <coughs> All right, that was great. All right, congratulations, Jim. Best of luck and look forward to working with you. All right, next resolution number two is making a permanent appointment in the Office of the Town of Carmel Supervisor. Susie, would you read number two, please? Shall resolve that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel hereby appoints Bella Simodoma to the position of Principal Office Assistant in the Office of the Town Supervisor on a permanent basis, effective immediately, subject to the provisions of civil service law and the civil service rules and regulations. I offer this resolution as is written. It's been read. Okay, seconded by Councilman Borelli. Roll call vote. <coughs> Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes, with pleasure. Bella, Bella's worked <coughs> in my office uh, as one of my assistants for a little over 10 years now, I believe. Right, Ann? 10 years? Yeah, 10 years. So uh, well deserved. She does an excellent job, and uh, congratulations to Bella. Okay, next resolution number three is a resolution making an appointment of an account clerk two in the Town of Carmel Highway Department. Councilman Borelli, would you read three? Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel hereby appoints Christine Yandoli to the position of account clerk two, group four, step four, annual salary retroactive to January 1, 2019, in the Highway Department on a probationary basis, subject to provisions of civil service law and the civil service rules and regulations. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman McDonough. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. <coughs> yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And congratulations to uh, Christina Yandoli. Well deserved uh, appointment to account clerk two. Uh, she's done a great job in the highway department and uh, she's been with us for quite a few years. So this is well deserved for her to be promoted to, to that new title. Congratulations. Okay, next uh, resolution number four is a resolution in support of the repeal of Article 25A of the New York State Public Health Law. Councilman Schneider, would you read four, please? Whereas on Tuesday, January 22nd, 2019, New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo signed into law the Reproductive Health Act, and whereas law contains a series of measures permitting abortions into the third trimester of pregnancy to be performed by healthcare providers who are not board certified physicians, and expanding reproductive procedures for women. And whereas the law creates a new Article 25A of the Public Health Law and eliminates Public Health Law 4164, which will requires a board certified physician to provide medical care for any live birth that is the result of an abortion where the baby is left to die unless the mother decides otherwise. And whereas the law permits abortion at any time during pregnancy in the health care provider deems it necessary for the life, health, and well being of the mother. And whereas the health and safety of the mother includes all factors such as physical, emotional, psychological, financial, and the woman's age relevant to the well-being of the patient. And whereas there is concern for the health of pregnant women as serious complications may occur more often during late-term abortions. Now therefore be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel urge all members of New York State Legislature to introduce and pass legislation to repeal this law and protect the life of the unborn while also caring for the health and well-being of the mother and be it further resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel petitions all local and county governments to introduce legislation encouraging the New York State Legislator to take such action in support of this initiative. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman McDonough. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Okay, next resolution number five is a resolution nominating Harold Gary as the Distinguished Planner Award for Westchester Municipal Planning Federation. Harold was nominated for this uh, award by the Town of Carmel Planning Board and the Town of Carmel Planner, Pat Cleary. So um, we just need a resolution supporting their, their endorsement and their support of Harold for this uh, Federation Award. So Councilman McDonough, would you read this, please? Sure, where Harold Gary has dutifully and faithfully served the Town of Carmel through his tenure as a member of the Carmel, Town of Carmel Zoning Board and as a member and chairman of the Town of Carmel Planning Board for a period spanning 38 years. And whereas through his dedication and efforts in serving the Town of Carmel in this capacity, Harold Gary has earned the respect and admiration of his colleagues and the residents of the Town of Carmel. And whereas the Town Board of the Town of Carmel 
wishes that the outstanding contributions and efforts of Harold Gary in his service to this Town of Carmel Zoning and Planning Board for nearly four decades be duly recognized. Now therefore be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel will with great pleasure hereby nominate Harold Gary for the Distinguished Citizen Planner Award from the Westchester Municipal Planning Federation. And be it further resolved that the, town, that the Office of the Town Supervisor is hereby authorized to submit all documentation to the Westchester Municipal Planning Federation with necessary and required in connection with this nomination. I offer this resolution as read. Second it. Okay. I second it. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Schneider? Yes. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, next resolution number six is a resolution uh, accepting proposal for a safe yield analysis in Carmel Water District for Carmel Water District 2, and this is uh, going to be for Lake Mahopac. Councilman Borelli, would you read this, please? Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel, acting as commissioners of Carmel Water District 2, and upon the recommendation of the Town of Carmel, Town Engineer Richard J. Franzetti, P.E., hereby accepts the proposal of Hazen and Sawyer's Engineers, New York, to perform a safe yield analysis for Lake Mayotte <coughs> at a cost not to exceed $16,000 in accordance with this proposal dated March 1st, 2019, and be it further resolved that Town Supervisor Kenneth Schmidt is hereby authorized to sign any and all documentation necessary to authorize the actions contained herein, and be it further resolved that the Town Controller, controller Mary Ann Maxwell is hereby authorized to make any and all necessary budget transfers or modifications required to fund the cost of this authorization. I offer that re this resolution as read. Second. Okay, uh, just for a quick discussion on your second, Susan. Yep. Um, uh, I would like to have, me personally, I'm not sure if any other board members would feel the same way, but I want to have a better understanding and I want to be educated on exactly what a safe yield analysis is and what we're trying to achieve by it. Um, so I know what the ob objective is, but I, I, I want to have an understanding on how it's done. I'm not sure how a safe yield analysis is done. Um, do they measure a certain amount of water capacity in the body of water? How does that work? Does so anybody know? The, the company that we are um, doing this resolution with is the, the same group of engineers that we had met uh, in regards to our water district to um, plant study. Mm -hmm. Part of that study, I, I had walked the plant and I was there for the walkthrough with the engineers um, for the pre-bid. And uh, part of that study included a safe yield analysis for Lake Linitis capacity to supply Water District 2. Um, they had supplied us with that analysis result, which is what led to um, making this recommendation. Because as Hazen and Sawyer did the analysis for Lake Lanita safe yield. What they had uh, drawn as their conclusion, if I, if I can recall the study correctly, and it's only been a few weeks, so I should be hopefully relatively close. Um, the capacity is estimated from 700 to 1 million gallons per day. Uh, and, and in 2050, the expectation at full build out is somewhere between 1 million and 1.3 million, I believe is what they had expected. So um, based on that 30 year projection, um, part of what we had referenced back was the alternative water source that um, our engineer had forwarded us last week from the 2014 report. And part of that alternative water source was a supply to get off New York City's water system that incorporated Lake Mahopac as a supply. Um, and the numbers, the, uh, I don't know the exact numbers, but I know that we were talking about tens of millions of dollars for that alternative route to be carried from Mahopac over. So now that we've got official confirmation from this engineer that did the analysis on Lake Lanita to say, we don't see it outfitting utilizing today's technology. Um, we don't see it outfitting a full build out of what's already approved in this area in 30 years. Now we are going to have the same company do that safe water yield analysis to make sure that it'll supply not only the use of Water District 2 and, and supplement anything that may be necessary, but that'll also give us the information for the other water districts that presently use Lake Mahopac because we, I, I, I don't think any of us would want to 
have a situation 30 years down the road where, okay, so we took care of Water District 2 because we knew Lake Lanaida was going to be bad 30 years down the road, but now here we are with Lake Mahopac 30 years down the road and we're no good. So using the same company that did it for La Lake Lanaida, we're hoping to gather the information that's going to be necessary to ensure that Lake Mahopac is going to be able to do everything it does now 30 years down the road with fill build out plus supplementing water district two or possibly taking them completely off of New York City water and utilizing it for full flow. So I guess that's what this safe yield analysis is to give us is what exactly is Lake Mahopac going to do. Same company that did it for us with Lake Oneida uh, just mm -hmm. a few months ago. All right, John. Almost All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jonathan, just just to piggyback on that, and I agree with what everything that you stated, um, <coughs> Lake Mayapak is a 660-acre lake. It's huge. It's huge. It's 70 feet deep at the deepest point uh, of the lake. Uh, the average depth is between, I think, 35 and 40 feet is the average depth, but the deepest point between the two islands. Do they take the actual acreage of, of water and the depth of the water, and do they do some type of calculations as is, if the, if the 1.3 million gallons of water is the yield or the use per day for Carmel Water too, can the lake sustain that based on the acreage and depth of the water given an average rain season? Because rain season can vary, water can vary. Uh, do they consider uh, any other conditions that are, are there certain assumptions that are made that the lake can sustain this amount of water based on the average rainfall per year and based on the springs that are feeding Lake Mayapak. How do they determine all of that? Is there, is there a, a scientific process that's used? To I can only imagine this is why they're the engineers. Yeah, I, I uh, guess. So, but yeah. but I, can, I, can, I, I would hope, um, being that I think, if I recall correctly, someone was just telling me that this was like in the top five wettest seasons in recorded history this yeah. past year. So I can only imagine that they have to use something that would, that would include that variable, but this is why they're engineers. And again, it's that same engineering firm that just did it for uh, Lake Lanaida, so I can only imagine that they'll utilize the exact right. same procedure for analyzing the yield on, on Lake Mahopin. All right, for, for, for my own edification and for me to be comfortable signing this, which I have no problem doing, but I wanna, I wanna actually speak with the engineers from, from uh, the Hazen. firm, Hazen, and just whoever is going to be that, that individual that can tell me, educate me on how the process works. I'd uh, be more comfortable understanding sure. it better. Then I th maybe what we could do, I think the, the, the perfect solution would be um, maybe an email out to Rich and the board tomorrow just saying, we had this discussion. Mm -hmm. Can you get a summary of what's utilized by, at, from Hazen Sawyer? Yeah, that 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 yeah. that's fine. That that's fine. Just because I'm I'm real, this, I'm new. This this is new to me. A I safe, like getting information. Why not? Safe field information analysis. is good. And then you know? Kenny, since we, since we're just talking about, it, I have a question. If we're doing um, this yield analysis for water two, as well as some other water districts in Mayapak to make sure that in 30 years they can do it, why is Carmel Water two ta taxpayers just paying for it? Why wouldn't it go? through all of the water districts. Because, because if they're doing the, with what Jonathan, Jonathan just said, if they're doing the safe yield analysis for Lake Mahopac to see if in 30 years, if the water districts over here in this area will be able to sustain the build out and also possibly go up to Karma Water 2, I don't understand why Karma Water 2 is just paying for the bill. Why wouldn't it go to all of the water districts? Um. Greg, maybe you can answer that. I would say because the, the initiative yeah. for the proposed safe yield study is solely because the early returns on the uh, water treatment plant study had indicated that Lake Lanaida may not have the capacity to serve water to for its future needs. Okay? Uh, 1, 8, 9, 10, and 13 all currently draw off Lake Mayapak. Okay, so but for the, the inquiry that's happening now with respect to Water 2's plant and it's obviously its growth uh, and needs in the future, I don't think that you would be doing the safe yield study for Lake Mayapak to also potentially supply some portion of Water 2. That doesn't mean it can't be allocated. I'm telling you that that's why, that's why that I would okay. think you would be charged to Water 2. All right. I, I just wanted to... The, the problem I have there. with this, 
I, I truly do think it's a waste of money. It's never going to be implemented or used. But we've had everybody from Water 2 question everything we've done with Water 2. And when you're talking about spending 25 to $40 million to finally fix Water 2, the small piece of the puzzle that possibly using this for $16,000 is, it's just, it's, I don't want someone to say we did 99 pieces of the puzzle and why don't we look at that? So do I like spending it? No, I, I was gonna vote no, but if I, I'm looking at the big picture now and on the big picture, it's, we have to know every answer and that's one of the answers, well, whether we use it or not. What's gonna do is tell you whether it's possible and then if, if the board is where at least maybe Jonathan and, and Susie and Kenny, mm -hmm. the cost of transmitting that yeah, supply yeah, up to two is, is going, it was in that yeah. report as an estimate, it was, it was a big number. So I'm not yeah. sure that I think this is maybe to rule it out. Everything on water two is a big number. <laughs> whether you redo that filtration plant, whether you build a new double one down here. Yeah. yeah, even just yeah. relining the pipes, we're talking about 12, 13 million, and it's not even replacing pipes. It's uh, yeah. Yeah. big numbers. Yeah, we're going to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. And again, it's, it's, it's gathering information, and because we already have a, a, a study that says, here's a possible water supply, and now we're talking, thank goodness we are talking about open dialogue with New York City right now. Um, and, and I look forward to those discussions progressing. But I, I think we still need to be cognizant of our lack of control as long as we're on New York City's water. Yeah. Um, big, right. big numbers, really big numbers. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you, everybody. All right. Roll Thank you. Call a vote, please. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. That was a good dialogue. Uh, and we got information out there. We shared information. We shared our And we're going to get more information, And too. we'll get more. Right. Okay. All right. Next resolution, uh, number seven, is a resolution authorizing installation of a water main, water main Carmel Water District number nine, contract C242-2017. Jonathan, would you read seven, please? Resolved that the town board of the town of Carmel, acting as commissioners of Carmel Water District number nine, and upon the recommendation of Town of Carmel Town Engineer Richard J. Franzetti, PE, hereby uh, authorizes the installation of a six inch water main to provide service to the dwelling premise at 88 Woodland Road, tax map 64.19-1-40 in accordance with the memorandum of Town Engineer Richard J. Franzetti, PE, dated February 20th, 2019, at the unit cost provided for within contract C242-2017. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman McDonough. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Okay, next resolution number eight is a resolution accepting a proposal for the installation of radio transmission equipment for Carmel Water Districts number one, eight, 10, and 13. Councilwoman McDonough, would you read eight, please? So resolved that the town board of the town of Carmel, acting as commissioners of Carmel Water Districts number one, eight, 10, and 13, and upon the recommendation of town of Carmel town engineer Richard J. Franzetti, PE, hereby accepts the proposal of DNJ Plumbing, Mahopac, New York, for the installation of electrical and radio transmission equipment at the Kings Ridge Tank and Crest Tank Pump Station locations within the referenced Carmel Water Districts at a cost not to exceed $17,950. And in accordance with the detailed contained proposal dated January 28, 2019, a copy of which is on file in the office of the town supervisor. And be further resolved, the town supervisor, Kenneth Schmidt, is hereby authorized to sign any and all documentation necessary to authorize the actions contained herein. And be further resolved, the town comptroller, Marion Maxwell, hereby authorized to make any and all necessary budget transfers or modifications required to fund the cost of this authorization. I offer this resolution as read. I'll second it. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. <coughs> Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Next resolution number nine is a resolution authorizing advertising for bids. Councilman Borelli, would you read nine? Resolved that pursuant to the request of Michael Simone, Town of Carmel Highway Superintendent, Town Clerk Ann Spofford is hereby authorized to advertise for the bids for the purchase of the following items for fiscal year 2019. 
uh, gravel, crushed gravel, item, item four, bank run, blacktop, road oils, catch basins, tree felling and trimming, drainage pipes, aluminum, polyethylene, steel, and waste wood processing. Be it further resolved that the town superintendent is to furnish detailed specifications for the above to the town clerk and Spofford to be used in conjunction with the town's general bid conditions and specifications. Roll for this resolution as read. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman McDonough. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Okay, next resolution. Uh, Resolution number 10 is a resolution accepting a proposal for bulk petroleum storage compliance program for the Town of Carmel Highway Department. Councilman Schneider, would you read 10, please? Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel hereby accepts the proposal of Environmental Compliance Management Concepts, LLC of Middletown, New York, for the performance of monthly petroleum bulk storage compliance program as promulgated and required by the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation in accordance with the agreement dated January 29, 2019, a, a copy of which is on file in the office of the Town of Carmel Highway Superintendent Michael Simone, and be it further resolved that the Town of Carmel Highway Superintendent Michael Simone is hereby authorized to sign any and all documentation necessary to authorize the actions contained herein. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Second by Councilwoman McDonough. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. <coughs> yes. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. And Supervisor Schmidt? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, next resolution number 11 is a resolution authorizing payment for waste wood processing for the Town of Carmel Highway Department. Susie, would you read 11, please? We shall resolve that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel, upon the recommendation of Town of Carmel Highway Superintendent Michael Simone, hereby authorizes payment of the sum of $16,000 to Mulch Inc., Mahopac, New York, for waste wood processing services performed at the request of the Town of Carmel Highway Department and in accordance with the invoice dated January 4th, 2019 and January 11th, 2019. And be it further resolved that Town Comptroller Marianne Maxwell is hereby authorized to make any and all necessary budget transfers or modifications required to fund the cost of this authorization. I offer this resolution as read. Seconded. Seconded by Councilman Schneider. Uh, roll call vote. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Schneider? Yes. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes. <laughs> I was saying, oh man, Mike's Motion got a long one. <laughs> okay, next resolution, uh, number 12, is a resolution <laughs> order calling for a public <coughs> hearing for the increase in improvement of the facilities of Carmel Water District number two in the town of Carmel, Putnam County, New York, April 24th, 2019. That's when the public hearing is going to take place on this resolution that Councilman Borelli is going to read. I will for this resolution as pre-filed, but I want to explain it. And I have my phone out, which I never have up here, because somebody from Water 2 asked me a question which will pertain to everybody. And I'm reading the question from him. I'm very confused about the following for tonight's meeting. Resolution number 12, at a maximated, at maximum estimated cost of $13,301,400, at the February 17th meeting, a $25 million figure was discussed by engineering. I spoke to the engineering department the following day, and he said more like $45 million if the plant is expanded. Now at the April 24th meeting, you're presenting a not to exceed $13 million, which is this resolution, what's the true cost for this project, regards. As we discussed this, well, I did about a year ago, instead of piecemealing it to do the whole thing, and the people have come out and said they want the whole thing done, and some people have come out regularly, I'm surprised he's not here this evening with this on the agenda, saying he wants it done, everything done, and yesterday. And he's right. Everybody up there is right. This 13 million is for the distribution system. The, we estimated not being experts mm -hmm. at around 15 million for the, plant. for the plant and another 5 million for tanks and a couple of million to put the whole thing together and expenses. So this is probably gonna cost somewhere between 30 and $40 million when it's all said and done. And this $13 million 
if the people want to know their actual cost on it, bonded out over 15 years, the cost is $460.65 a year. Bonded out over 20 years, the cost is $375.02 over 20 years. And that's for just a third of it. So Carmel Water 2 is looking probably at a number between $1,500 and $2,000 annually for a new complete water system. Uh, everything. The plant, the the tanks, and the complete. distribution. Yeah. 100%. And, and then if we go alternate water supply, and then, then tack on to that, 50 to 100% That's why to talking about the 16,000 on number six, if you put that together with the 30, $35 million number, it's something you we have to spend to make sure we have every answer. I'd offer that resolution as pre filed Second. Second. All right, and what I'd like to do, I agree with you, what I'd like to do, because this is going to impact all of the users in Carmel Water 2 um, significantly. This, we have to advertise this any way we can to make sure that those residents are aware of the meeting at the Carmel Fire Department on the 24th to discuss this. Uh, so whatever means necessary, so they, they all, whether it's gotta be in the newspapers, Eric, uh, I know Bob, I don't think they made it back to you. <coughs> It's distributed up in Carmel, but we have to do that. Make sure it's going to be on our website. The uh, um, Frank Chianca from the Hamlet Carmel Civic Association, he can advertise it in, in their newsletter or through an email blast of all the users of whoever email addresses he has. And I'm even thinking, to be honest with you, Mike, we just purchased these variable message boards. Maybe it's not a bad idea to put those up there in advance of that meeting. So that at each end of the hamlet, so driving through the hamlet. The firehouse. Put it, one at the firehouse, and we could put one down by Puck Plaza, maybe. This is probably the most important meeting Eric. you guys ever had up there in terms of dollars and cents. Big it, time. It, yeah. And last one was big was the sewer. Yeah, and right. they'll have all of the information there. Well, so bring your questions. We'll, we'll have as much information as we can get yeah. to bring yeah. out there so everybody yeah. can have it. Yeah. So if you can help us with that, with the courier, that'd be great. And we'll get the message boards out there. That's why we bought them. Put them to good use. And uh, we'll get as many and people there as we can. And yeah, and absolutely. And just one other thing. What I would suggest to um, anybody, any of the residents up in Carmel um, Water too, is that if they have something that they want us to make sure that we have the information on, contact one of us so we can make sure that we have that information to bring up. We probably will, but just to make sure if you have any questions or whatever, because this way, when we're up there, we'll bring everything that we have in case there's something else. But Mike, th thank you for um, reading that, because I got that email and I was gonna call the gentleman um, after the meeting, but hopefully he's watching. I'll call him anyways, but thank you. We, we you are expected. Email? I did. Okay. Yeah. And, and we are expected to have, so this number is, is absolutely just distribution. We are expected to have the information back from um, Hazen and <coughs> Sawyer. Sawyer. Hazen and Sawyer uh, in regards to one, the uh, water district two plant study. So we should have better numbers for that uh, at that meeting. And we should also have the safe yield analysis we were told back from the same company um, maybe what we could do is request a representative from Hayes and Sawyer be there with yeah. us for that meeting. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. that yeah. might be a spectacular idea to have it come right from mm -hmm. the engineering firm that's well, doing the study. Um, I won't, can you get us an email for tomorrow um, requesting the information for resolution six that we had talked about? Yeah. And then also if we could get an engineer, I, I think if you guys are okay with that, I mean, I think that's yeah. a very smart use Absolutely. of our, yeah. our time. Yeah. Okay. I think all the, all the engineers should be there. I just yeah. Think because, uh, yeah, because if uh, someone has a John question. John Fulchetti because he did the alternate water <laughs> supply study. Rich Every because he's the, the one who oversees everything. Absolutely. Everyone involved in that. We I want it, all of the information there. I think B and J Plumbing. I, I Mary Ann everybody. for projections. Yeah, for the, right. With the instructions to them, there was no answer that night that I don't know. Oh, there's Infra oh, Infra Infra Mark. Mark. oh, okay, sorry. So yeah, yeah so yeah, Infra Mark. Yeah. Yeah. And for Mark, we'll she'll also there. be there. Yeah. Yes. Tommy yeah. Brand. Again, because we don't, we're not sure, you know, whatever questions the residents have, we want to be able to give them the answer, you know, mm -hmm. um, or at least the information that we have to them. 
It's at the Carmel Firehouse. The firehouse. They um, should be able to be. get 200 plus in there, you think? I think 250 is for some reason something I remember. It's, it's twice the size of this? Yeah, right. they, they should All be right. able to. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good question, though, Eric. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. That, that meeting is at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Yeah, yeah, that's at 6 p.m. April 24th, 6 p.m., Carmel Firehouse. Yeah. Good to be open. So <laughs> <laughs> Annual tradition. Okay, so all right. The public hearing is at 7? Uh, the, the public hearing is at 7, yes. But the special meeting will be at 6. All right, so uh, next resolution is we number 13. Oh, I yeah. don't think we did the roll call. Um, did, did we, we do roll call? Not yet. Okay, no. roll call vote, please. Councilman Borelli? <coughs> yes. Councilman Schneider? Yes. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes, motion carried. Thanks, Ann. Okay, so the next resolution then is number 13. It's a, a resolution authorizing signing of a change order. Number one, this is for Sycamore Park Tennis Court Rehabilitation Contract C230. Councilman Schneider, would you read 13, please? Whereas the Town Board of the Town of Carmel has previously awarded the contract for the uh, above project to Sport Tech Construction of Brewster, New York, and whereas Town Engineer Richard J. Franzetti, PE, has recommended that the Town Board approve change order number one to the aforesaid contract. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel hereby authorizes the town supervisor to sign change order number one to the aforementioned contract, resulting in an overall increased contract price in the amount of $59,578.50 in form as attached hereto and made a part hereof. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Okay, seconded by Councilwoman McDonough. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli. I want to explain on this one. I'm going to abstain on this one only because this is an old problem that's finally being resolved. <coughs> and I'm not comfortable from years ago when it started. And uh, it has to be resolved <coughs> for recreation today, but I'm going to abstain on this one. Councilman Schneider? Yes. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And this uh, will we'll stay on track then for the expected opening of summer camp? Jul um, July is the begin. Oh, that's July 4th. Yeah. July 4th weekend. It'll okay. be open by yeah. July 4th. Yeah. And that's uh, the recreation director is aware of that, and uh, the recreation committee chairman is aware of that. Too. They, they're, they're okay with the July 4th Perfect. Uh, completion. Okay, uh, next resolution number 14 is a resolution authorizing signing a change order number one for Sycamore Park Basketball Court Rehabilitation Contract, and that's for C250. Councilwoman McDonough, would you read 14, please? Sure. Um, whereas the Town Board of the Town of Carmel has previously awarded the contract for the above pro project to Sport Tech Construction, Brewster, New York. <coughs> And whereas Town Engineer Richard J. Franzetti, PE, has recommended that the Town Board approve change order number one to the aforesaid contract. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel hereby authorizes the Town Supervisor to, to sign change order number one to the aforementioned contract, resulting in an overall increase to the contract price in the amount of $59,578.50 in form as attached here to and made a part hereof. I offer this resolution as read. Uh, um, I'm going to second it, but um, we're going to need one amendment to the invoice. So would everybody flip, <coughs> would everybody turn to the like sport tech invoice? At, yeah. And in the first sentence where it says tennis courts, just put a line through tennis and write basketball above that. And then just initial, uh, just it, initial. It has basketball. No, but up here, the first sentence has tennis. Uh, way up there. Yeah, I so see. Just, yep. put, just everybody, if you would just put yep. a line through tennis. And write basketball yep. in and just initial it underneath it. Everybody got that? Yep. Okay. That's the only change. It was just a typo. <coughs> you should have read basketball. Uh, everything else is the same. Oh, okay. 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 All right. Um, and the next resolution is going to explain where the money's coming from. Roll call vote, please. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Yes? Yes, I'm sorry. sorry. Councilman Schneider? Yes. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. This is, this is for the... Uh, no, 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 no. Mike, no, Mike it's... Oh, it's all three are tied in? Yes, yeah. yeah 14. Oh, I'm we sorry. Did, we abstain, just, abstain. You're abstaining on this one? 
Okay. Councilman Grell abstains. Thank you. Yeah, because this, this was on the basketball <coughs> Okay. All right, the next one's for the fund mix. All right, so we did the roll call vote. Yes. And uh, so next resolution number 15 is it authorizing encumbrance of expenditure of funds from the Parkland Trust Fund Court Rehabilitation for Court Rehabilitation at Sycamore Park. Councilman Borelli, would you read this one? Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel hereby authorize the expenditure of up to $111,599.40 from the Parkland Trust Fund for the rehabilitation of the basketball and tennis courts at Sycamore Park. To be a further resolved that the Town Comptroller, Mary Ann Maxwell, is hereby authorized to make any and all budget transfers or modifications necessary in connection with this authorization. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Okay, seconded by Councilwoman McDonough, but before we vote, just I just want to explain, so everybody knows what the Parkland Trust Fund account is, that's where the money's coming from. It's the old developer's fund account where <coughs> builders and developers in the town of Carmel, they had to contribute to a recreation fund, which was used to be called the developers fund. Now it's the Parkland Trust Fund. For condos or townhouses, it was 3,500 per unit. For single family homes, it's 7,500 per unit that they had to pay. And that monies were dedicated to Parkland Trust, which is for recreation programs yes. for the town of Carmel. So the 111,000 is actually coming from the developers that built in the town of Carmel that had to put money aside for this for recreation activities in the town of Carmel. So it's not coming out of the general fund, it's coming out of that line. So they, they're paying for it. Okay. All right. Ken, uh, do you know yeah. what that balance is? I was just that we can that's available after this expenditure. Uh, after this, yeah. uh, about two hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, it's running very very low. It's running low. So this is <coughs> it was three fifty, three sixty. Now with this, it's coming to down to about 250 that so we can use. There's other money right, that are that are aside. still set aside right yeah, now. For litigation. Um, but if there is right. a multifamily code that's enacted, then this will start to build up Correct. again. In theory. In theory, it will. Okay. It should build up again. Yeah. Yeah. And this will replace the subject to the recreation code. The old dedication of land upon the planning board approval and finding. Okay. If some developers dedicate land. Time's gone on. They usually pay the fee. Mm -hmm. Okay, thirty-five hundred for multifamily. At this point, we really only have senior multifamily uh, permitted in our code, and seventy-five hundred per lot on a subdivision map per lot. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I think we still need a vote. I think. Yeah. Really? Roll call vote, please. Okay. Councilman Borelli. Abstain. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried three yeses and one abstention. Okay, that completes the town board voting meeting for this evening. Is there any members of the public that would like to come up at this time and comment on any of the agenda items that we covered this evening? Come on up. Yes, hi, good evening. Eric Rose from Carmel. We did a lot of talk tonight about Carmel Water District Number Two, and last Saturday we had a glitch in the water system that we lost pressure for a brief amount of time. I called the supervisor, and within five minutes, the water company called. They sent gentlemen up, flushed out hydrants. There was a little bit of s silt in the uh, hydrant, and that was the end of the problem. But it's changed so because years ago, if there was a problem, especially on a weekend with the water, you'd go crazy. The police would know what was going on. You couldn't reach anybody at the water department. And now with the new system that you guys have and ladies have, it's a tremendous difference. So... On behalf of those in the uh, Carmel Water District Number Two, we thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I think a lot of that goes to Supervisor <laughs> Schmidt's responsiveness and maybe the threat of a bad article being written if there wasn't a quick response. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm worried about. That's why <laughs> but, uh, I, I think I had the engineer call you also, right? <laughs> I called the engineer and, and uh, I gave him your number, yeah. and uh, and he called and Infomark called too. Yeah. So Eric, when you call, we get right on it. <laughs> you have a very proactive supervisor in the town of Carmel. We're here, I'm here for you guys. Especially if the report calls. <laughs> Especially when a report calls. <laughs> is, is, is there anyone else for uh, agenda items at this time? Come on up. Well, thank you, Eric. Appreciate that. Okay, if, uh, being none, uh, we're open now for uh, new business. It's the open forum. Non-agenda non -agenda items at this time. I wish I could say the same about Comcast. 
Um, I understand the town is renegotiating a contract with Comcast now. And uh, we have a problem up on Glenview. When the storm hit the other day, a wire came down. It's about four foot off the ground. Um, contacted them on Monday. Oh, we'll have someone up there in four hours. Monday came and went. Tuesday, same thing. Wednesday, same thing. Six o'clock this evening, I get a call. Hi, this is Comcast. We're doing a customer survey. I said, you're kidding. They, you know, they cross line. I, know I spoke to a supervisor. And the bottom line is, according to Comcast, unless the service is interrupted, the matter is put on the back burner. And they'll get to it when they can get to it. Those were his exact words. So you know, a truck's going to come by and knock the wire down. That's going to be the end of it. But this wire is just sitting there now for four days. It's, it's, it's hanging across. Yeah, yeah. Across the road. Court, no, How unfortunate the, uh, they're going to the wait for a truck to actually driveway. break it, and then they'll give you a four-hour response time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Across your, your driveway. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's and, and your jeep just barely gets under it. Oh no! You know the jeep could be like tomorrow with the garbage trucks. Yeah. 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 Couldn't put the garbage cans out there because yeah. they'll knock it right down. All right. Susie, don't you have? Uh, we have somebody from Comcast that can do fault lane, right? It's just crazy, though, you know. Yeah. She's no longer there? You know, push okay. one, push button two, I push button right, three. Susan, can you, uh, yeah. crazy. can you reach out to Frank Monaco? Yep, yep. And uh, we can get that information from Frank, and we'll, we'll okay. make a yeah, phone Good, do. thank you. We'll see and what we can do to get somebody again. over there. Hopefully yeah. next week we'll hear accolades about how quickly Susie got that handled for you. No, no, don't put the pressure on me. <laughs> it's not me we'll doing, I got to call Matt and Frank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, but I wasn't going to say it, Kenny, but you're all right. right. Otherwise, we'll rip it down, and then there'll be an interruption in service, and then they'll, they'll get on it. Then. But that's something good. Maybe we'll you add something to the contract because we're still negotiating with them. They have a bucket truck out there. You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, thank I'll, you, I'll send out, as soon as I get home, I'll send out the email we'll to get out, Frank. We'll get on it. Right. Thanks, Susan. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Is there anyone else? New business, open forum. Come on up at this time. Okay. There being none, town board members, have any announcements? Jonathan? Have anything going on? Uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade is yeah. this weekend, is so this please. Uh, Two o'clock. Yeah, please come out. Yeah. Have a good time. Yeah, we're actually. It's always a great parade. We're actually using the new message board. They're going out tomorrow, announcing that the Route, route Six is going to be closed. They have a shamrock on it. Uh, talk to one of Barry. Uh, there's there's going to yeah. be an orange shamrock, though, right? It'll be orange. Yeah. It'll be an orange shamrock. It's the um, thought that counts. So. Yeah, and I just wanted to remind everybody that um, we are going to be starting the farmer's market this year. Yeah, yeah. The um, inaugural farmer's market will start in July. And um, next week I will not be here, but, um, you know, they, they're coming in front of you, the Recreation Department and Lynn. Okay. will be in front of you guys with the rules and regulations and the vendor um, application forms. So if there are any vendors out there that is considering joining the um, – the fabulous Town of Carmel Farmer's Market start in July. Give the Recreation Department a call because they will be limited, so um, you're going to want to get in there as soon as you can. And that's it. All right. Susie, thank you. Yeah. All right. Jonathan. Okay, good. Uh, I don't have any announcements, surprisingly. You know. Are you kidding? No, I don't, wow. I don't have any. Uh, come to the parade. Bring your family out this Sunday, 2 p.m. Route 6 starts at Mount Hope Road, 6 in Mount Hope, and it goes up to Lake Plaza. So, uh, It'll be, hopefully it'll be a nice day, a little warmer than it is now. I know the snow, the, the, the county pushed the snow back on the shoulders for people to park along here, so hopefully it'll go up well, and uh, we'll see you guys there. And uh, we don't have executive session, so we're going to close the meeting right from here. So I need a motion to close. So moved. So moved by Councilwoman McDonough. Seconded. Seconded by Councilman Schneider and Borelli. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everyone. Be well. We'll see you next week, the 13th, for town board work session. Susie won't be here. She's going to miss next week's meeting.